like, did you know or recognise this person? No, I didn't. Could you tell me how his physical condition appeared to you at this point? Well, it was fairly dark, but I could see that he was doubled over and was propping himself up against one of the cars. Um, I thought he was ill or maybe injured. That's what it looked like. And did he see you or respond to you in any way? No, he didn't. Was there anybody else with him? I didn't see anyone, no. Did you make any attempt to speak to him? Yes. <clears throat> but he didn't reply, so I went over to see if I could help, uh, which is when he began to have a sort of convulsion. A seizure, I think. And um, what did you do then? Well, I didn't really know what to do for him, so I just thought that the best thing to do was to call for an ambulance, um, but I couldn't get a signal. So I decided to get to the nearest landline instead. Okay. <clears throat> I just need to clarify. You mentioned in your preliminary statement that you saw an unusual deterioration in Mr. Russell's condition, in addition to the seizure he was experiencing. Could you tell me at what point this occurred, please? It was just after that. Uh, as I was leaving to get help, um, to get to a phone, I mean, just as I reached the elevator, I looked back at him. Okay. Could you describe again what it was you saw? <sighs> I understand that it was only a few hours after this incident that an additional two bodies were found. That would be in the early hours of the 14th? Yes, at two different locations. Both displayed evidence of the same extreme physical trauma that Mr. Russell had experienced. I should point out that the subsequent post-mortem examinations determined that each victim did belong to the same particularly rare blood group. This couldn't have been the exclusive cause of death, but as we later found out, it was certainly relevant. There was some initial speculation that a new virulent form of rabies might have been responsible, which could have caused the accelerated metabolic collapse, but was highly unlikely to have caused the gross distortion of the skeletal structure. In any case, there was no evidence of its presence in any of the PCR tests. In fact, there was no presence of any toxins, contagion, or infectious agents at all. Proceeding to the night of the 16th, Significant in, in two regards. Yes. At 8.17 p.m., a call was made to the emergency services from a residential address in Canary Wharf. The caller gave a brief description of her husband's symptoms before being unexpectedly cut off. Uh, when paramedics finally gained entry to the apartment 25 minutes later, they found two bodies identified as a Mr. and Mrs. Halliday. The pathologist's report concluded that Mrs. Halliday had suffered a depressed fracture of the skull and multiple fractures to the C3 and C4 vertebra. In short, her husband's physical deterioration had become so uncontrollable that she had been killed as she attempted to assist him. It would seem that the Joint Committee recognised the potential threat that you advised them of and responded accordingly. Fortunately, yes. The emergency measures were in place before the next occurrence, which took place a little over 36 hours later.
it determined why the physical deformities advance so aggressively in this instance? Not conclusively, but subsequent cellular examination of the deceased did result in a partial breakthrough. Cytology research at Roslyn identified part of the biological process that we now know to be responsible. By this stage, research efforts were focused on what role DNA might have during these episodes. And quite quickly, the Roslyn team determined that certain long redundant gene sequences were becoming activated. It's never been clear as to what their function or purpose may have been in the past, but one theory is that they once played an important role in the evolutionary process. This may also explain the range of somewhat primitive physical characteristics we've seen in each of these cases. And the incident in the um, Crickson Finance Building? Yes. On the evening of the 19th, following a board meeting that had finished at 7.25pm, an account executive and one of his assistants had elected to work on into the evening. At approximately 8.35pm, just over an hour later, the PA made her way down to the second floor to have a set of papers signed off by a member of the auditing team. Now, this was Mr. Martin Wiseman. At 8.54 p.m., Mr. Wiseman was found deceased in the fourth floor lobby area. But most importantly, physical evidence found in Mr. Wiseman's office was confirmation that he regularly purchased pharmaceutical products via an unregulated online retailer. The discovery of similar products found in the possession of the other victims led to the conclusion that they too had made purchases from the very same website. Forensic analysis of this evidence revealed that it contained a highly unstable, synthesized property that was chemically similar to hormone that is naturally found in the process of DNA construction and repair. It is this similarity that had prevented earlier detection during the pathology examinations. In short, the prolonged usage of this unstable chemical combined with an unusual blood group eventually culminated in activating the catastrophic biological process that caused their deaths. As you will already know, the um, website in question has already been shut down and steps have been taken to bring those responsible to account for the iniquity of what has happened here. I have briefed the minister thus far and he is satisfied that a major public health crisis has been averted. He asks that I should thank you and your team for the work done. If I might say one last thing, continued diligence in this matter is critical. We know from past experience that even the most aggressive public health warnings are frequently ineffective. With unlicensed pharmaceutical retailers becoming more and more prevalent, it is entirely possible that we will face further emergencies of this type in the future. Thank you, Dr. Ackerman. We will um, take your concerns under advisement.
Subscribe to Dust for new sci-fi every week.